For me, I want to go to a platform that allows me the best technology to tell the story, that allows me to thoroughly explore every possible avenue of how I can do that. And for me right now, Facebook Live and Snapchat are those platforms. But they haven't always been, and they won't always be. I'm not married to either one of those platforms. I simply use them as content creation tools. I then redistribute the content to other environments. Initially, 2010, I hitchhiked all the way up East Africa. From Durban to Damascus, there I am up the top. Back then it was WordPress and shooting little videos and snippets of text and putting it all together, but it was so slow and laborious, I had to get a laptop and sit down. I ended up putting out like a piece a week. It wasn't fluid enough. People wanted to follow my journey, but it was too late. In 2012, uh, ammunitions depot exploded in Congo. Hundreds were killed, thousands were maimed. That time, we mixed it up a little bit. Can you see that little GoPro that's wrapped around my neck? That was a little bit more fluid. It was point of view. Where you look, you shoot. I had a camera in my hands. I was doing things here and there. I was super, super underqualified to be there. I didn't have the most experience. I definitely wasn't the best journalist. But I was able to do lots of stuff. I could shoot your videos. I could shoot your videos. I could, I could write text. I could do all these sorts of elements. It was only when I went to Syria in 2014 uh, with a group of doctors into Darakush, which is in the Idlib province, and we were covering the way they set up a hospital, that I started to appreciate finding a technology that could encompass everything, where I could do videos and I could put text on top of videos, and on top of the text I could put tweets, and on top of the tweets I could put infographics, and start to create a really rich dialogue. And here's what that video looks like. Just seconds ago, we saw a child, uh, basically a car came screaming in here, blood pouring out. There was a child, he's been shot just below the heart. At the moment, we understand it was some sort of an accident. It was an 11-year-old accidentally shot dead by his father. He's cleaning his gun. I'm just getting word, uh, an update on the child that has been shot. It's coming through now. We tried to personify this hospital. I wanted to do this my whole life, and having done it, I wouldn't want to go even one centimeter closer. The point is, when you initially get to a location, an event, a shoot, you only really have one shot, because for the most of us here, we've got two hands and one device. So you've got to choose what you're going to do. You can't go back in time and do a live that you haven't done before. You can't get 360 degree footage that you didn't have. But if you pick your platform carefully, you can repurpose that content for other devices. You can shoot something on Snapchat and put it on Instagram. You can do a Facebook Live and you can recut it for Vine. So it's about being as fluid as you can be. Yet, four years on after Snapchat has come about, we're all still asking what is it and how do we use it? It's almost like that Snapchat ghost is a mystery to us as the media. To understand Snapchat, you actually have to look at the other apps that are playing in the social media ecosystem. You've got Facebook, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and Instagram, all part of this juggernaut that is Facebook. All of those platforms, they essentially do the same thing. On Instagram, you put up photos. On uh, Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, you send messages, you communicate. And on Facebook, you put up everything, right? You have a little box where you put your videos, you put your text, you put your photos. But it's actually quite rigid. There's not a lot of play. You put the, photo, the videos in the format that they wanted in, you put the text in the format that they wanted in. I want a platform where I can have a blank canvas. To me, Snapchat is like paint. Do you remember guys paint on the desktop? Now imagine paint in 2016. Paint is still fun, right? You can do so much, it's so unique. Snapchat is like that. You've got a blank canvas in a vertical view and you can do all sorts of crazy things. Start thinking about Snapchat as a content creation tool. I'm not even gonna to speak to you guys about distribution on Snapchat. I'm talking about using it to build cool things because that's what I enjoy doing. So here's six ways that the Hindustan Times have started to use Snapchat. And it was born not out of trying to be funny or creative about it, but quite simply because, can you imagine what a headache that is if you're trying to roll out mobile journalism training techniques and you've got a five-year-old, I don't know, some Chinese-made phone and you've got an iPhone 6 on the other end and you're trying to teach them apps and software that will work across the board. We needed an app that would unify everybody so they'd all be on the same page. Secondly, all of my reporters, we did a survey where we surveyed the entire newsroom. 36% of them were like, Yusuf, I get like 5 million people reading my front page of the Hindustan Times. I need to focus on my print. I don't have time to worry about snapping. 
Effective day, we need an app that would be as fast as possible, where you could just snap and go, snap and go. No post-production process. The beauty of Snapchat is you shoot everything within the app, you put your text down, you put your uh, emojis down, and it's good to go. You send. There's no post-production process. There's no taking it into edit. So if you look at the big bottlenecks that exist in uh, most companies, in fact, whether it's media houses or PR, it's generally as you get towards the video editor, as you get towards the graphics, as you get towards the animation. If you can take that entire burden and put it on essentially the people that are shooting, that workflow becomes a whole lot faster. So essentially, Snapchat was about creating content as quickly as you could shoot it. Unfortunately, I don't have it to show you here, but you, it, uh, whoever's got Snapchat open, you hold down the snap button and you send. You hold it down and you send. And effectively, what you do is you create a linear sequence. Your last shot comes off the next, and the next comes off the next. It's a very simple and organic way of storytelling. And ironically, it's very much like traditional television. It's, it's a linear story, you've got shot after shot and almost cutting them apart. Uh, but effective storytelling on Snapchat means really, really... So here we are, looking at, at, at the Snapchat screen. Effectively, if you hold down this button, you can write text, and you hit this button, and you send. It's that quick. Shoot text. I believe it's actually the fastest way to get a story. A round of applause for my wife, who's actually doing this in the back. <laughs> it often takes two to mojo. She's been the one that's been filming some of the most dangerous environments I've been in. The point is, you're not allowed to do so much here, whether it's the text or the ability to change the thing. Yeah, I'll go where you go, honey. Um, whether it's text or emojis, it's a, it's a playing field where you can experiment to its fullest. The second way that we've used Snapchat, and perhaps the more memorable, she swipes up from the bottom to get into memories. That's the CMS system of Snapchat, where you keep all of your content. The idea, again, that it's ephemeral, that last 24 hours doesn't exist. You've got all of your stuff there. Snapchat, compared to the other platforms, has invested a lot of money in technology. It, behind these emojis, behind the face masks, there's some seriously powerful gadgets that I haven't seen in any other platforms. We call it in India, the word, in Hindi they call it Jugaad. I, I don't want to know much Hindi, that's pretty much the extent of my Hindi. But Jugaad was uh, defined by The Economist as being frugal innovation. So we literally tried to hack the system. We said, okay, this app can do face filters, so how else can we use it? And this is how we used it. Uh, rape happens every 22 minutes in India. We try to, you know, put it under the carpet. Instead of, you know, going and reporting and trying to help the victims. This is a client. A climb against sexual abuse. Respect women, so you also do. For the majority of the cases, it's the brothers, cousins, uncles, fathers who are doing it. I was five years old when it happened. And that makes it more difficult for them to speak out. There will always be animals in our society. We are right now in Mysore at the foothills of Chamundi Hills. There are about 1,000 steps uh, to climb to the top. Uh, so we have survivors uh, who have been through sexual trafficking. I have been in Mysore for a long time. I have been in Mysore for a long time. I have been in Mysore for a long been through acid attacks. I have been through acid attacks. Okay, now darling, at the back, this is a big ask, but I'm going to ask you to try the face filters on, on yourself. She doesn't like being on camera, but let's see if that plays out. The point is, this, there we go. There she is. Oh, we didn't have Colin. Colin doesn't want to be on camera either. If we hold down Colin's face for a moment, Colin, put your finger on the screen, there we go, and you swipe to the right. You can... <laughs> Colin's on a horse. Colin, let's take a touch. Wait, go back one, go back one. Colin, Colin, take your tongue out. There we go. So, this app was never, ever, ever designed to cover rape or sexual abuse. But it worked, and it worked on so many levels. For one, <laughs> the sexual abuse survivors got to choose their own filter. They flicked through it. This gave them a sense of empowerment. I wasn't telling them what they would represent themselves, they were telling themselves. They held my phone out like this, like a selfie, and they looked at it like a mirror. They weren't telling their story to me, they were telling it to the phone. I walked away, I said, this is the most sensitive story of your life, I'm not going to be this reporter with a big broadcast camera and a blue mic. Tell us about your rape story. This is personal, this is intimate, this is them. In terms of the audience, it gave them the ability to see the eyes, expressions on the face. For how long have you seen broadcasters silhouette somebody's face out, or use a blurred out face, and then essentially all you're doing is hearing a sound bite. Where's the emotion in that? 
again, using the platform, seeing the potential in the technology and repurposing it elsewhere. Most of you who have seen that video would have probably seen it on Facebook or YouTube. You didn't even watch it in Snapchat. We simply use Snapchat as the content creation tool. One of my favorite applications for Snapchat is for undercover journalism. No, even if it's not undercover, just the ability to shoot when nobody really knows you're shooting, just off the cuff. Some of the best shots I've ever taken are when nobody's watching. It's, it's not unethical, it's simply observing. When you're shooting in vertical as well, it's far more discreet than doing it this way, it's just natural. <coughs> the other major, major benefit of doing undercover journalism with Snapchat, every time you hit that plus button I told you about, it shoots it up to the cloud. It shoots it up to the cloud. I was in Punjab about a month ago, and there was a story that 70% of the youth in Punjab are on drugs. And I was like, well, that's a ridiculous figure. How easy is it to buy heroin in Punjab? So we went out, and my biggest fear was that the drug dealers would steal my phone, or the authorities would steal my phone. So we said, let's do it on Snapchat, and we can shoot it up to the cloud, so if my phone does go missing, everything will be fine. And it looks something like this. It's pretty scary right now. I've come to Punjab to do a fluff piece on a new film, but the big talking point in this state is drugs. I'm gonna go undercover. This looks way too formal. Okay, that's probably a better balance. So we're leaving the hotel now. The time is 11.40. All right, we've got our first ride. All right, so things seem to be working out. The auto driver says he knows the place. Uh, he's taking us there right now. Yeah, I'll definitely know this. Scary right now. We are in a little back street, uh, an area quite far away. We are at Koda Colony, Shimla Puri, and the auto guy has gone to get us some coke. All right, so the auto driver has gone off to buy the stuff. Says it'll be better if he gets it without us. that the Black Lives Matter protesters are live streaming on Facebook. The fear that your content is going to be destroyed, the fear that your phone is going to be removed, and Snapchat effectively allowed us to put it up on the cloud. It was another consideration that most of my reporters, again on the survey, some 30% said, Yusuf, we don't have enough memory on our phone to be able to do any more video. Everything's shooting up to the cloud. And as an editor, I don't ever have to worry about one of my reporters uh, having all their footage of the protest and it's stuck in their camera roll and I'm phoning them up and saying, please, send me your shots. It's all live. I can pull it off Snapchat and see exactly what people are doing and when they're doing it. This is a really unusual use for Snapchat. Um, send pics not in a flirty way, like send me your images kind of way. But these are emojis, by the way. You'll never use normal emojis and yellow faces again and you can use your own face, essentially. And that's another tool. Crowdsourcing. We were covering education. And education, of course, is a beat cover every single year, it's so boring, right? This time is a little bit different. All of these Indian students going to university and trying to get into university, a tiny fraction gets in. So we said, let's train up six students to Snapchat the most stressful six weeks of their lives and send us their snaps every week. Again, effortless content. You don't have to do any of the editing. They are putting the sequence together. They're sending it to you and it's raw and it's organic and it's about the way their parents are putting pressure on them and their sex lives and you got this whole different perspective on the education story, quite simply because they were the ones holding their phones. And it looks something like this. Six people. Six goals. Six ideas. Six dreams. But one objective. To make their summer the best day of This is the first ever Snapchat reaction. Six students using Snapchat. Thank Welcome you. to Delhi University. Well, I okay. I'm going to go check out to document the most stressful six weeks of their lives as they try and get a seat at university. I'm Shivam Parashar. My name is Sara Gro. Ankata. Rigwana. Noor. Oh, I'm Akash. I want to work for the UN. Investment banker. Quick-witted politician. A future diplomat. Aspiring novelist. He's getting it. I just want the phone. That's it. This is Campus Calling. The difference between this kind of crowdsourcing and normal crowdsourcing, I suppose, if it's on Twitter, if it's on Facebook, it's highly searchable. You search student and you get videos and everybody from AP to Reuters, they would all be sharing that footage. On Snapchat, you would never know that these kids are students at Delhi University because there's no real search capacity in the discovery. So it's about creating your own little ecosystem of content. 
And then you're essentially crowdsourcing exclusive stuff, which is the goal, right? You've got people shooting for you, you're sitting in the office, it's a win-win situation. Two other ways that we're experimenting with Snapchat that I'm quite enjoying, and if you just go into the camera app, um, the opportunity to verify content. Camera app, by clicking on this one, there we go. <laughs> um, basically, if footage goes up on Syria, or on a war zone, on Facebook, on Twitter, it's very difficult to tell that it was actually shot today, where the location is, what the time is. The beauty of Snapchat is you can swipe through these and you'll get locations. It'll say Canary Wharf, it'll say the time. With Snapchat, you have to shoot within the app. So it's, it's a further way for us to validate that what somebody's sharing is what they say it is. A really, really, really good application for journalism. And my favorite reason that we use Snapchat at the Hindustan Times is effectively because of the communication tool. If we just go to, uh, if you click on this one, darling, this one, and then you pan with your finger, or you can drive from the right to the left. No, no, outside of it, yeah, oh, back one. There you go, you end up in the messenger service. And the messenger service is the most intimate form of communication. Take Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, combine it, and it has all those services. But what it means is my reporters are in the field, and while they're shooting and putting up stuff, I can give them prompts. Dude, you can get me a wide shot. Please shoot that again. Your interview sound is no good. Send, send me that again. I'm giving real-time communication to the reporters as they're in the field. And we've actually spoken to some people in this room and across to get feedback on how they are using Snapchat for storytelling. Let's try clicking on Craig Fox. Craig's in the room. And you can click through on that. And there we go. He shot that outside. That's how quick it is. It's real time. If we go back out, we can see somebody else's comment. Oh, is there another one? There we go. There he is. But unfortunately, we don't. Craig, what are you saying here? Um, just that I include my community in place in their codes, their usernames, and if I make them feel part of this map. And it's a fantastic point because in Snapchat, it's perhaps the most difficult place to get following. You, you have to hand out your details like a phone number effectively. But again, I don't care about that. I'm using it as a canvas to build things. I'm taking it elsewhere. I'm, I'm not worried about getting a loyal uh, following there per se. Discovery is perhaps the most interesting part of the app if you want to know where the future is going. You pan right and you pan right again. One more time. There you go. This is where a handful of content creators exist. Sky News, CNN, and effectively it is a monopoly on professionalism. These guys don't have to play by the rules. The rest of us have to shoot within the app. We've got to use those emojis, we've got to draw. These guys do highly curated magazine content. We can play on uh, Refining 29 for an example, or whichever one. And you click, like any snaps, you are controlling the pace of how fast you digest this content. Mixture of text, of videos, of words. For me, Discovery is a good glimpse of where the future of the app is going. You can look at this sort of layout of the ability to do highly structured blogs, and this is where I imagine all of us will be able to play. I think Snapchat's going to become increasingly like what MySpace was, a space where you can create uh, a canvas exactly as you want. Um, and that's what everybody wants, right? Again, I, I find conventional platforms to be too rigid. Let's do a couple Snapchat hacks, because I think that's the reason most of you are here, right? To learn how to Snapchat and, and a couple of cool tricks. This is going to be really tricky because she's going to be the one doing it. My first advice is, in some respects, forget every broadcast rule you were ever taught. This is not landscape, it's vertical. This is not on a tripod, it's handheld. People say in, in broadcast, in all due respect to Glenn and all the great trainers, they say, never zoom. In this space, you can zoom, and let me just show you the zooming function. You take your finger, and you push it up from this button, like that, and down again, and up again. That's a brilliant technology, because that means effectively you can zoom with one hand. Doing this feels naff after you've done that. You're doing a fantastic job, Samaya. Secondly, to use the pencil tool. You simply, just say you're writing, take a picture there, and you write a little bit of text. And you write blah, 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 Snapchat, fantastic. And click the T button again, and it becomes bigger. You can manipulate that, you can move it around. Just say that background's not too clear, and you need it to stand out a little bit more. You click on the pencil button, and you can draw beneath it. Just like that. This is actually quite fun. <laughs> um, 
Take it one step further. Maybe you've got that text and you want to have a really quick solution to put a backboard behind it. Click on that sticker and you can click any emoji you want. She's taking the uh, dead person's face. What are you saying, Dalton? <laughs> Blow it up, pixelate it, and suddenly you have a backboard. It's all about hacks and stuff. It's about working out ways of doing things in, in quite unconventional ways. One of my favorite and most powerful technologies of this app is the ability to track. I don't know apps that allow you to track to this degree. Just say you're shooting a video. You get Colin if you want. Where's Colin? Hello, Colin. <laughs> All right, and you start recording him. Start recording him. And for whatever reason, you need to track some sort of movement in the shot. All right? You can pick up, pick up whatever you like. Maybe uh, something not so dead this time. <laughs> yeah, the phone will do. And hold that phone down on a position with your finger. Push it down. It will stick to that location. You guys are welcome to play on your phones in this session, by the way. It's, it's, it's encouraging, in fact. Um, another element is the ability to do filters. And the idea that Instagram copied Snapchat and stuff is probably true, but we're all copying everyone anyway. Facebook took the timeline idea from Twitter, and Snapchat took the filter idea from Instagram. If you swipe left across the photo, <coughs> Just take a photo of that screen and swipe, you get filters. And if you keep going, you'll get one for this event we've actually created. Uh, not the dog, the dog. There we go. If you hold down your finger with one hand and swipe across with the other, you can put dual filters on top. And you see what I mean? Again, multi-layered video. The idea of just shooting a video and exporting it now feels outdated to me. It feels too simple. I want to add more and more dimensions. Music. You're, we won't do it in this example, but if you want to add music to Snapchat, it's the simplest tap. You just play music on your phone, and it will record it underneath your snap. Good to know. Obviously, sometimes edits are very boring when they don't have it, uh, music. These bitmojis are the most fun thing ever. If you take a photo and you can grab your bitmojis, if you sync bitmoji, which is a separate app, with your Snapchat, and you click on this one, down the bottom, or any of these ones, you have a whole lot of emojis that are built in your own figure. It makes normal emojis, smiley faces, and crying feel totally outdated. Why would you want to use some generic when you can use your own face of yourself sitting on the toilet or whatever you might want? And you remember how I said forget everything you learned in broadcast? Well, forget that. Because broadcast is fundamentally important if you're going to understand Snapchat. Because when you put together a sequence, it's linear. You put a shot, 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 shot. And if you don't want to have to edit it later, you want it to be in an in a, in a order that's understandable. You want to have an establishing open shot. You want to say, here we are at the Reuters Auditorium. You want to interview two people. Which means you need to storyboard really, really immaculately if you want to do a good Snapchat story. There's, do you understand what I mean? There's no ability to take a shot and, and replace it. It's all in order. So, storyboarding is critically, critically important on this platform. Now, in my opinion, the biggest competition to Facebook Live... Uh, go back a second. Back to the right. The biggest competition to Facebook... Uh, sorry. The biggest competition to, face, to Snapchat is going to be Facebook Live. I believe as people become more and more comfortable with broadcasting themselves live, and data becomes cheaper and cheaper and faster and faster, We'll be less reluctant, it will be less uh, driven to produce pre content, and we'll just go live all the time with everything. So, we've been experimenting a lot with Facebook Live. This week, there was an incredibly exciting one. Did you guys watch when uh, Trump Towers was being climbed by a guy with suction cups? Yeah. I couldn't take my, hat, my, my face off that. I mean, the suspense of is he going to fall? How are the police. If you go into the uh, gallery, there's a picture of this. Uh, ah, there we go, suspense. <laughs> How is the, how are the police going to get him off? That's what keep uh, audiences watching Facebook Lives. There has to be a path A and a path B where even you, as the content creator, don't know where it's going to go. That's powerful life. It's the same reason why when BuzzFeed, and I hate to reference the BuzzFeed, but I must, when BuzzFeed wrapped a watermelon in elastic bands, they put one on every couple of seconds, over and over and over again, to see how long it would take before it exploded. They had 800,000 people watching that watermelon <laughs> for 40 minutes. It's slow, slow, slow TV, but it's engaging and it's suspense driven. If you've been watching for 20 minutes, you're going to keep watching, right? And it's the same thing for the guy coming off the top of the building, which he didn't, by the way. So, suspense is one. I mean, us not having this ready and the suspense isn't going to work. When we were in the back there, I was like, guys, we should Facebook Live this. This is awesome. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, suspense. The other thing that you need to consider in lives is engagement. The, con the, 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 the audience that are watching it, it's not like television. They have the opportunity to be part of your process. The most effective Facebook lives that we've done are two things, and they weren't the two things we would think. Number one, they would travel. We would go to Old Delhi, to Jama Masjid, and to these strange areas, and we say, for the next hour, we're going to go on a food tour. I'm going to take you around, but you tell me where to go. And I'll just stand there until somebody tells me. And then they'll comment left, and we'll say, okay, left. Shall I eat this? They'll say yes. It's almost like 360 degree videos, right? Because in that way, when, when the audience are telling the live stream what to do, they're essentially defining which way you turn the camera. That's engagement. If you have the ability to pair engagement and suspense into one life, that's what I think is a winning formula. Just before I left Delhi last week, we had this crazy statistic that 2% of the sketches that are done by police to identify suspects are accurate. The vast majority are not. They don't lead to any apprehension, to any arrests. So what we did was we brought in a sketch artist. We actually met him at a coffee shop. And we showed our Facebook audience a picture of a famous Indian wrestler who's at the Olympics. And we had our audience on Facebook Live describe what he looks like in the comment section. And then the sketch artist would use all this crowdsourced commentary and draw it. And it was the ultimate, right? Because you had engagement of them defining Oh, yes, he's got cauliflower ears. No, he looks like he's, he's, he's going to go bald in five years. And the guy's like, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, it, it, it had that element. I had the suspense of trying to find out, will it be accurate? Will the two images match side by side? The other thing we realized with Facebook Lives, everybody at the moment is trying to do multi-camera graphics, overlay. And now you've got the ability to do that. You can make it really professional. The top five, five Facebook Lives that we've done, had no overlay, they had no graphics, and they weren't multiple camera. They were single, straight out of the Facebook app. We believe that our audience wants something that looks a little bit authentic. The generation of YouTube where shaky and bad lighting, I think is still in. I think people, young people especially, appreciate raw content. The other thing we found, we set up a whole studio at the office, much like this, and we would sit there and we'd say, this is the Hindustan Times, and we're gonna give you the top five stories that you need to know right now. None of those did well. Every single Facebook Live that succeeded was out of the office. The fact that we're working on mobiles, you need to make the most of that and be mobile. If you're talking about a film review, be outside the cinema. There's, I don't think there's ever an excuse. If you're talking about traffic, be on the road. There's never an excuse to be in the office anymore. But I will offer you some warning on lives as well because I personally have been bitten. When you're live, there's no filter and Traditionally with broadcasters, you would have to be next to your SNG truck or your OB van and generally close to the action but not in the action. When you're with a mobile going live on Facebook, you can be right in the scene. And that means that there's very little between you and what you're about to see. In South Africa, there is xenophobic attacks that take place. And this is me raiding a hospital, uh, sorry, a, a hostel uh, with the police and the army and we're going live. I'm wearing a bulletproof vest. And all these men are up against the wall. These men were suspected of being part of setting a man on light with a tire around his body. But they weren't suspects yet. They were literally being dragged out of their rooms. And unfortunately, in the process of being live, faces were shown. And it's not illegal, but it's not right either. Because by association, it was saying, actually, these guys could be xenophobic suspects. My advice to you is shoot from the hip. See it with your eyes first, and then shoot it if you're going to go live. Uh, we've had other instances where people have been in evicted buildings where they're removing tenants and they've shot through a door and there's a bunch of children in the room and you've shown a whole bunch of children's faces. You've got to be so cautious with lives because essentially on the mobile it's allowing us to get into more positions than we ever had access to before. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how to implement all of this because you can have the Snapchat ideas and you can have all these wonderful plans, and you might be working at a media house or a brand organization, and they just don't believe it. If you can't convince them that you're going to save costs by doing mobile journalism and Snapchat and Facebook Live, convince them that it will actually help with their production process. At the Hindustan Times, if we pull up a cell phone, <coughs> effectively, we try and give our storytellers as much power as possible to deliver directly to social media. So, if we pull that down, Effectively, it means that where possible, they go direct to Facebook, direct to YouTube, direct to Twitter. We sort of bypass the CMS system. 
and where we are producing edited content, where it needs to be uplifted, where we need to add text, music, emojis, we have newsroom influencers, and these are guys that have proven themselves. They've got a million views and we've given them a phone. And effectively, they feed content to that person, and that person uploads to social. The whole key to any of this being pulled off is speed. And the worst way that you can slow down speed is by creating Zs, where this person produces, they've got to send it to a video editor, they've got to send it to output, they've got to send it to a quality controller, and it goes up. So I'm sure the question that you guys are wondering was, well, then how do you maintain quality if everyone's uploading to social? We use what we call a traffic light system. If a story is green, it's like this event. It's harmless, it's, it's almost fluff. There's very little that can go wrong. So, I just call my own presentation fluff today. Um, if it's yellow, we take a little bit more caution if there's a cockroach that's been found in the fruit. We'll slow that process down a bit. And if a minister has been caught pants down, that's a red story. We flag it in our diary meetings as red, and we take absolute cautions. But for the vast majority of our stories, they're green. And if they're shot on Snapchat, get them up as quickly as possible. You don't need to slow down your reporters. The faster that your reporters can feel that their stuff is online, and they're getting shares and retweets and likes, the more inclined they are to get involved in this process. I think as two final uh, thoughts that I want to leave you with, in traditional news, the whole notion was, if it bleeds, it leads. And that held true from the days of Vietnam, right? Bloody images on the front page of the newspaper did well. This is The Ugly Indian, a story that we did just about people cleaning up the streets of India. It got five million views in the first five days. We've never seen anything like it. And the reason is because we believe that social media inherently wants good news stories. When you share something in your timeline, it's a representation of yourself. It's saying, I also believe that we should clean up the streets of India. So I would encourage you guys to look for stories of hope, positivity. These are things that are doing well. And my overall message around this whole concept is, is platforms. Stop looking at platforms for the gimmicky emojis, space filters, and start looking at the technology that goes behind them, because that's where you can tell powerful stories. I'm focusing on my attention on Pokemon Go at the moment. I'm seeing how can we take the augmented reality of Pokemon Go and be walking around the streets of Delhi and move your camera, and you can see a story of what's happened in that location. Look up at the bank and you'll get the share price. Look at the streets and you'll see how maintenance is being done. We want to work Pokemon Go style uh, storytelling into journalism. That's how you essentially work on platforms, and that's how we're going to shape the news of the future. Thank you. Instagram stories. I think it's a fantastic imitation. Uh, I think they came out with it really late and they realized that. So, Instagram as a platform has become a showcase, right? Where you actually only want to put your best stuff. Uh, and for that reason, people weren't producing enough content, so they needed to make something that is ephemeral, that is like Snapchat. I think Facebook too are going to develop camera apps. Uh, but Snapchat is so much more than that initial page. It's the discovery section. It's the ability to have in-depth chat, which is at the moment uh, significantly better than any. But to be honest, I don't care either. Like, I'll use whichever. I'm not uh, attached to Snapchat. If, if Instagram's platform gets better and allows me to do more as a journalist, put better text down, put better uh, overlay, and create a better story, I'll migrate there in a heartbeat. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask a really simple question because I know quite a few folks are new to Snapchat. Hands up. Newish. Yeah, okay. So if you're creating video on Snapchat and you want to then edit to edit it together and download it to save it to the internet, what sorts of apps are you using or kit? How are you doing that? Do it within the app. It's as simple as, it's a good question. <coughs> to save a piece to your camera roll, effectively, is what you're asking to go to work with it later. Yep. Hit the save button. Sorry, this save button, the arrow down. And then if you want to hit that, Samir? Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Just, no, okay. just talk us through so it. You, you hit that, yep. and then you scroll from the bottom to the top, or you can go out of that from the top left. Exit, abandon, and then you want to go into your, yeah, and you want to scroll from the bottom to the top, and now you're in your memories, and there's one of your memories. Yep. Click on it, and you'll have the save icon on the top left. Uh, or you can save an entire story. A lot of those, the circles are stories. The squares are just individual snaps. It's, it's really easy to do. Yes. Uh, but again, it's not necessarily made for broadcast because it lends itself to being vertical. 
But what it is good for broadcasters is the in-betweeners. Instead of dropping content on your audience at the end of the day, if you've built a snap story, you've got a loyal amount of people that are already following you. So that by the time your 7 o'clock news come out, people are already tuned in. That's the trick to all of this. It's effectively about migrating audiences from Snapchat to Facebook, from Facebook to your newspaper, all over the place. Which brings me to a second question, which is how do you build audience engagement? So um, a lot of people just use Snapchat. I mean, a lot of young people use Snapchat just to talk to their friends on an individual or group level. So how do you build it into a journalistic tool? So you're, where Snapchat, you're communicating with large groups of people. For sure. Because they don't open up their APIs, uh, it's very difficult to integrate any sort of tools. So the process of communication is the most manual and intimate you can ever imagine. Anybody on Snapchat has the opportunity to message anybody. I can message Beyonce right now. I don't know if she'll read it, but I can. The point is, people are expecting one to one and you have to give it to them. They're going to want your journalists to answer specific questions about Brexit. And that's exactly what differentiates it from other spaces. On Facebook, you're putting a comment down in a public space where everyone else is seeing it. You can't ask a stupid, stupid question. You might not be inclined to. Here you can ask a direct question to that reporter and they'll respond directly to you. So it's, it's, it's labor intensive and it, it requires people to direct their attention to each person. What I will say is on Snapchat, you know the engagement's real because unlike a timeline, they're not clicking through and seeing your story. They only watch your story if you click on that person's name or they click on BBC or Al Jazeera or whatever they're watching. So if they're there, they're worth far lot more than somebody who's getting an auto play on any other platform. I understand that the uh, the raw is what draws people to it, but do you ever use anything? Do you ever use a, micro, a you know microphone that plugs in, or do you ever use that technology to make things just a little bit crisper? Absolutely, that's the first thing. In fact, you spoke about the microphone that it's audio that any of the Mojo trainers will tell you here. You can get away with shots, you can clean up lots of things, but you can't fix audio. Uh, so absolutely, if you can get a lapel mic. Having said that, I shoot very, very tight. Uh, if you look at this with the rape survivors, or anybody for that matter, I'm often right, right under their lip, getting uh, as close to And you can get away with that with a cell phone, because it's not like a broadcast camera. It's far more intimate. You're just listening to somebody, and you're right out there. Uh, but no, I agree with you fully. If you can lock it off, it's better. And Effectively, with Snapchat at the moment, for some reason, the image stabilization from your iPhone that normally works in your camera doesn't work in Snapchat. So you need to be even more steady than you've ever been before. Hey, yes. Hello. Um, so it's funny you mentioned uh, Pokemon Go and the whole AR thing. As you know, Snapchat acquired an AR company recently. Yeah. I was wondering where do you think they're going with that, and you know, as far as a creator tool and for journalists such as yourself. Yeah. So. I think Snapchat, uh, this is ambitious, but I, I think their face mapping technology is so good and their AR that you will inevitably be able to control the app with your facial expressions. You'll look left and it'll pan left, you'll look right. Samsung started doing that with reading. You could look down and read down. I think that's going to be a massive development for AR uh, to be able to control something without your hands. Uh, it's going to open up a whole world of possibilities. You said good stuff, mate. Um, you mentioned stats earlier on. You said that that video about I think, cleaning up the streets, something like five million views on that. How do you know? How do you know we've got five million views? Yeah. Ah, Facebook Analytics. You love them, you hate them. Ah, okay. So it was that wasn't in Snapchat. You got that no, five no. million. No, no. So I must confirm. Well, that wasn't shot in Snapchat at all. But I must confirm we don't care at the moment about Snapchat as a distribution tool. India doesn't have the market for it. It's a very, very uh, high data sort of tool. It's the really elite that are using it. We are simply using Snapchat to create stories and repurpose them elsewhere. Uh, so the analytics. But on that topic, if we, if we just go to... Uh, so now, if you want to show them... Are you, are you familiar with, Facebook, with Snapchat analytics? No, no. So if you go to the... So down from the bottom, yeah, and then to the right to left with your finger. No, uh, other way. Uh, right to left, and click on that three dots right at the top. Cool. That's your analytics. Scroll down so we can get nicer figures. Um, and if you click on any given one, let's just click on this one for example, you can actually see who's watched, which is kind of creepy data. I mean, Facebook will tell you how many people are watching, but you don't know who's watching you. This means you can engage specifically one-to-one -one with the people that are watching your content. That's creepy, but also kind of cool. The other thing that's creepy uh, that I want to bring to your attention that I did bring up earlier, that discovery section that I told you about, this professionalism, right, where you can create all this amazing stuff that Sky News and stuff do, 
That is a closed circle. It's a private poker club. If we are worried about Facebook and control, controlling algorithms and being able to prioritize what news is on our timelines, Snapchat have got infinitely more power because they're defining as a platform who can play in this space. Uh, so that's definitely something to be wary of. Um, where do you get um, inspiration for original content? Because I go on Facebook and Twitter and I'll see like in the morning Lab Bible will post something and then Huffington Post have done the same story and AJ Plus have done the same story and that whole day I'll get one story but just on so many different outlets but it's the same story that goes through the mm -hmm. whole day and it's like I'm constantly searching for something new and original and I just wondered the stories that you've done are really original and where do you get the inspiration for that? It's a good question, and thank you for the compliment. It's an entire shift to right. If you look at AJ Plus and all of them, it's they're turning into Facebook factories essentially. They're taking wire service and they're adding yellow and white text and music, and they make it a minute long and it looks like a music video, and that gets six or seven million views. It's taking an editorial stance. If we wanted to, we could do right wing politics, Bollywood, and cricket, and we would dominate India's social media because <laughs> no, seriously, that's what trends in India. But it's, it's about taking an editorial decision right from the diary stage. The other thing that we do, that even in the UK, we've visited newsrooms and I haven't seen this here. We don't just ask our reporters who, what, where, when, why, how. Half of the editorial meeting is focused on what type of a story that you're going to create. What platforms are you sharing it on? How are you building it? If it's Snapchat, how are you going to make the story relevant in six months' time? How are you going to make it relevant in a year's time? Evergreen. 50% of our conversation is about that, about the technology. Uh, and I think once you start thinking about the tech, you start thinking much bigger. Uh, the, the education case is a perfect case in point. Nobody could be asked to go out to universities and shoot more cutaway of students. So how do we tell it differently? And we've got Snapchatting students. We've got time for one more question. Any questions from social? For example, the, the drug story that you had up, I know I was intrigued to go, well, why are the drugs there? What are the social impacts and all that kind of stuff? So how do you get past sort of that superficial level? Absolutely. I think often people look at the platform and then they think that the content is superficial, and for many cases it is, but it's literally about the content creator. And onto your point, I see something that I've been dying to do for ages, and you've reminded me to get back onto it. In Snapchat, you can effectively do 24 hours long story, right? It can be as long or as short as you want. So why not build magazine style? So Samaya, if you just click on that text, why not build this entire page with text? And you read a little bit, and then you click through, and then you watch a video, and then you go a little bit further. And if you've ever seen Facebook Canvas, have any of you guys familiarized yourself with Facebook Canvas? That's where we're going towards. A, a dynamic experience where you're reading, you swipe, suddenly you're in a 360, you swipe again, suddenly you're in a podcast, you're listening to something. So I think you absolutely can. And if you get onto that, you'll be the first to build truly in-depth journalism and storytelling on Snapchat. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a blank canvas. It's just a blank page. You can do with it whatever you want. Awesome. Thank you.